What is going on, guys? This is Ramada of the IWC Gamers Goon here today with your AEW Dynamite edition here on August 11th of the review here for us. If you guys haven't already, um, go check out the podcast um, that I did with um, Cameron Johnson and Escobar Morales over there on the CNE podcast. You can find that on Spotify. That's where I've been listening to it at. Um, that is going to be a twice a week thing on um, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'll be joining them and Stevie, who all four of us, we are going to come on there and give you the latest and our thoughts on the latest news and rumors going around the world of professional wrestling, whether that be the WWE, AEW. We talked a little bit about Impact. We talked about the New Japan show coming up. We talked about Triple Mania coming up. So, we are going to be covering everything and anything that is big in the world of professional wrestling. And this weekend, we do have two big shows with Resurgence and with Triple Mania coming up for us this weekend. And we didn't really dive too deep into that, but we did dip our feet a little bit in there and tell y'all what we expected out of those shows. So, definitely go watch the podcast if you want to hear what I had to say along with both of them. Um, and then Stevie will be joining us, or at least should be joining us, um, for tomorrow's episode of the c and Breakdown. Um, you're not is going to be a Marvel Weekly thing, but once again, I did tell y'all that I was going to be doing something. That is that something. Um, I'm still not exactly sure whether or not I will be able to commit to that for the next two weeks after tomorrow. I know that we'll be there for filming tomorrow. Um, we're going to be filming around noon my time, so it's well before I go to work. Um, but next week might be up in the air, um, depending on when we film for that. But let's get right in to what y'all came here for. I'm sorry I had to get a little bit of the promotion out of the way a little bit. Had to toot my own ego a little bit, toot my boys' egos for inviting me onto the show. Um, and that is for AEW Dynamite here tonight. The, the last Dynamite, the last AEW that has, that has not been proceeded or this is the last, or this is actually the first time that we're going to have two Dynamites in one week, but this is the last time that there has not been a Rampage before a Dynamite. Because this Friday, we are getting the debut of AEW Rampage. It's going to be in Pittsburgh. They got one heck of a card built up for the show already. It's only a one-hour show. But there's some big matches happening at Rampage. It's going to be in the same building as Dynamite was in tonight. It's going to be right in Pittsburgh, the heart and soul of Pittsburgh there. Um, and we're going to be seeing something interesting, man. We're going to see an interesting show. Um, a lot of people have speculated that Rampage could be seeing some big names debut. Um, a lot of people have said maybe that, that August 20th show in Chicago might be seeing a certain best in the world debut in AEW. Who knows? Maybe Rampage is going to be a big deal. Um, it's only an hour-long show, so I don't necessarily think it's going to be a major deal, but who knows? They might prove me wrong. It's that extra hour to Dynamite, and it's not making me watch three hours in one night, so you can't really complain about it. Um, but we started off Dynamite, this last Dynamite, before we get into this whole Dynamite Rampage um, weeks that are ahead of us. We have MJF coming in there and saying, that he's already beat Chris Jericho twice. And Chris Jericho can't, his ego can't handle that he's beat him twice. So he said, watching him handle the labors makes for great television. It makes for great television. Because you see Jericho get beaten, beaten up each and every week. Even though he's figuring out ways to win, you get to see it. He said he feels bad. But he says before he reaches the fifth labor, being MJF, he is going to run into the most dangerous and the most volatile big man in all of AEW, Wardlow. And he says if Chris Jericho is able to vanquish Wardlow, then he will then realize that even though he got through everything, he still is not better than MJF. Because MJF is better than you, and you know what Chris Jericho. He's better than you. He's better than you, Mr. Jericho. Um, then we get into the first match of the night. We had the Bucks of Youth, the Young Bucks, Nick and Matt Jackson, 
teaming up with Mr. Kenneth, Kenny Omega, the, the best, best bout machine in the world right now, um, going up against Mike and Matt Seidel, along with Dante Martin. Now, how did this match come to be? I'm not going to sit here and lie and tell you like I know. I don't know why we had this match. It did. It felt weird to have this match. Um, I will say, Dante Martin, it put him in a great light. Dante Martin legitimately looked at points that he was going to pin Kenny Omega, the AEW World Champion, the Impact World Champion. However many championships he has, Kenny Omega. So Dante Martin looked phenomenal, but eventually he ended up getting V-triggered. He ended up eating a one-winged angel. Another V-trigger, and that's all it wrote for Dante Martin. The one thing I will say about this match, other than it felt weird to have this specific match, um, is Dante Martin, I want you all to realize this dude is 20 years old. This dude's 20 years old, and he had people legitimately ready to lose it. Every time Dante Martin did a move, a big move, and was going for a pin on Kenny Omega and got a close three count, the, the crowd was into it. He was going to have a massive, massive pop. This dude's only 20. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and guarantee anything of Dante Martin's career path or anything of that nature. But imagine. Imagine in five years. If, if this is what this kid is doing when he's first starting off in the business, imagine in the five years what this dude's able to do. Dante Martin is a guy, if you guys are wanting to invest in a wrestler and you want to predict and put money or do anything on a guy that you really think is going to eventually be something, I'm looking no further than Dante Martin. If you have to go out there and pick one of these guys, they don't necessarily... I mean, obviously you all know that my top people is Sammy Guevara. Uh, he's, one of the, he's one of the ones that I've been vouching for for a long time now. And then, of course, Darby Allin. Kip Sabian was in it. They didn't do much with him. Um, but anyways... Um, if you want to invest in somebody, put your money on this guy, Dante Martin. This dude has star written all over him. His moveset is fantastic. He is very young. He has a long career path ahead of him. And hopefully it's a good one. Hopefully it's a good one. Um, but like I said, I don't really know why we got this specific match. Um, but the one thing I will say coming out of this match that was good about the match is it made Dante Martin look exceptional. Dante Martin looked the best he's looked since ever signing an AEW contract, since ever walking into a facility of wrestling. I don't think you could get as good as Dante, Mar or Dante Martin has in such a short period of time. I don't think it's possible, but he proved me wrong. That guy has the talent. Um, and randomly during this match, I don't really know where it came from, um, I don't really remember who said it either. It might have been JR for all I know. It might have been Excalibur. And maybe it was Don Callis. Don Callis was there. Um, and it was Kenny Omega and Christian Cage was just randomly announced um, for All Out. Something along the lines of, well, something or something. And he'll be, say, he'll be challenging Christian Cage at All Out. Where did that come from? That felt like the most WWE type thing I think AEW's ever done. Just randomly announces Christian Cage and Kenny Omega in the middle of a match. Yes, Kenny Omega's out there, but what does Christian Cage have to do with anything? Just randomly announce it in the middle of a six-way match that Christian Cage has no business in. And then Christian Cage, after the match, comes down, confronts Kenny Omega. Um, and Don Callis was sitting there. He was going to cut a promo. And as Don Callis was getting ready to cut a promo on Christian Cage... I'm not joking, the Pittsburgh crowd lost it with CM Punk chants. That was the most WWE moment I think AEW has had in their history. You are at the point where instead of people actually wanting to see what's happening on with AEW, and AEW's done a phenomenal job throughout the couple, two years-ish that they've been on TV, they've done a phenomenal job at keeping people's attention and keeping the points focused. You're not going to get stray chance very often. But tonight, with that segment, they were giving them CM Punk chance. I mean, really? 
really, we're going to randomly give them Kenny and Cage and think that things are going to be okay? Um, so then that led into, um, that led into Christian Cage saying, you know what, we're not, we are going to fight for that title. We are going to fight for, it, it, we are going to fight in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but not, not tonight. Because on Rampage, we are going to be, me and you are going to be facing off for the Impact World Championship. Okay. Hey, so now we have Christian Cage, not only undeserving of getting a title shot at All Out, which shouldn't have been him. I understand Hangman is not going to be able to be there, and you have to make a change of plans. I understand that. But at least build it up. At least do something about it. Christian Cage randomly gets handed an All Out title shot at the AEW World Championship, and then randomly, because they need a big match at the debut of Rampage, Gets a Impact Championship title shot. So now we're looking at in less than a span of month of a month, we're gonna have two championship matches between Christian and Kenny Omega. So people were going on Twitter. They were like, maybe, maybe the first match Christian's gonna get taken out. He's gonna get injured, and at all out, it's gonna actually be Hangman. I want you to realize, Hangman's out of the picture. Hangman is out of the picture. If Hangman was going to be at All Out, he would be there for the build to All Out. Hangman is having a child around the time of September 5th for All Out. He is not going to be showing up at All Out as much as you guys might want him to. I would love to, for Hangman to be there because if, if you've seen me over the past two years, of the fir- since the first All Out all the way up till now, I've been a big Hangman guy. I've met Hangman in person. You all know that Hangman is a guy that I think has world championship caliber and world championship material written all over him. I think a lot of people have that same mentality when it comes to Hangman Adam Page. I was sitting there rooting for Hangman Adam Page when half of the crowd was sitting there rooting for Chris Jericho. A lot of people were sitting there saying, oh, Hangman doesn't have he doesn't have the it factor yet. He has that it factor now. Hangman Page is a guy that I think and I hope will eventually become the AEW World Champion. But that's not going to be it all out now. I, I, I would have dreamed scenario, yeah, it could have been it all out. But I saw another theory that was going around that saying maybe, just maybe, Cage doesn't make it past Rampage. And at All Out, we are going to see CM Punk come up and face Kenny Omega. Interesting theory, but why would, why, if that, that, exactly what WWE would do. Somebody returns, gives an instant title shot after a terribly, terribly built up feud that they're replacing. That seems like the w- most WWE structured thing I think I've ever heard. And it felt very WWE-esque when it came to this whole situation tonight. I'm not saying that the match was bad. The match was phenomenal. I don't know why they had the match specifically outside of the fact that it made Dante Martin look fantastic. I don't understand the Christian Cage and Kenny Omega thing. I understand that at one point that was a match that they were kind of looking like they were going to push towards. I don't understand, though, why now. Why, when it comes to your biggest show of the year, are you just randomly throwing this together? And you're giving him two shots at Kenny Omega randomly. This doesn't make many much sense coming from coming from the people it's coming from. We I think everybody has been in the same same boat when it came to Tony Khan and AEW's booking that it has been nothing short of exceptional since since the day of the birth of the company. But tonight felt weird, man. It felt weird. I wasn't the only one feeling it. I know a few of my friends over in the IWC were feeling it. Um, I know a lot of people that think the show was great. It felt a little off to me. It felt like an awkward show. Um, it just it felt weird. It was something. It felt like you know how sometimes, like let's say, let's say you're at a party, and you just get this weird vibe. You know, you know something's about to go down, and then three or four minutes later, a fight breaks out at the party. That's the kind of feeling it gave to me. It was just this unsettling feeling that something wasn't right. Something in the air wasn't right about this show. And I feel like it was more so to do with the, 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 
lack of long-term booking here um, with the Christian Cage stuff and what happens later um, in the evening. Um, but the one thing I will say about the booking is we did get a Jurassic Express um, versus the Young Bucks match announced for next week at Dynamite for the AEW World Champion or Tag Team Championships. Um, that is a match where I hope the I hope the Jurassic Express wins. Jungle Boy Jack Perry, I want him to win. Luchasaurus, I want him to win. Hopefully, we get to do it. I can't wait to be in the crowd in Chicago doing it, man. I really can't. If if we get them in a championship match, hopefully we do. Um, I need to see them with some gold. I need to see them with some gold. Um, if you want to make a screw up or finish and potentially wait till all out to give them the gold, I'm all for it. Um, do I think that they're gonna win the gold? I'd like to believe so. Probably not, though. Probably not. And then we got a Malachi Black promo package. Um, he said that sometimes you have to make good out of things. He says, for some reason now, everybody thinks that I'm a fool because I'm the one speaking the truth. And the narrative has changed. He said, Cody has one foot in the grave, shows his boot, and he says, just let me know, Cody, when you want me to put the other one in there for you. And then he said something about how he's God, how you don't want to mess with God, and then pointed at himself. I, <laughs> Malachi Black is a guy that legitimately, he just has this aura about him where every time that this man is speaking or being in the ring, you're gonna you're gonna pay attention, um, and when you do, you you just feel the the presence of Malachi. He he's he's serious. He's he's not like Alexa Bliss. I know it's a bad comparison, but he's not like Alexa Bliss where it's corny. He's not like he's. Not, I mean, kind of. I guess with Bray Wyatt maybe as the fiend, but when when this guy is doing his work and doing what he needs to do. This guy, I'm not even joking, is one of the most serious and legit guys in the entire business. Not just the AEW, the entire professional wrestling business. This guy is legit. He feels legit. He feels like a superstar. He feels like what Brock Lesnar feels like when Brock Lesnar comes out to a ring. And they've had him all for what? About a month? They've had him for about a month? And he's already bigger and better and feels more legit than he ever did on the main roster. That gets him into a whole different conversation when it comes to the Dudley Dude. But Malachi Black is an absolute steal. He's an absolute gem. I expect us to get a match between Cody and Malachi one more time. And that will be in Chicago at All Out. Um, I do expect Cody to return potentially at Rampage. Um... I could see it being at Rampage, big moment, um, the return of Cody comes out, challenges him, um, big moment there in the debut of Rampage, I could see it, maybe he does it in Chicago, says, you know what, in in two weeks, I want to see you in this ring, in this city, at all out, who knows, who knows where they're going with this, um, but I do expect Cody and Malachi to have that last match where I'm going to hope Malachi wins at the pay-per-view. Um, we've seen some times where Kobe, like Anthony Agogo, did not lose when he should have, in my opinion. Um, hopefully that's not the case with Malachi Black, because you cannot do the same thing you did with Sean Spears or Anthony Agogo. You halted all their momentum when they lost to Cody. Cody can afford a loss. Let Malachi beat him again. Um, then we got announced that Fuego Del Sol. One of the best, best DDTs in all of the business. Going up against Miro Ooh. on Rampage. But if Fuego wins, he's a full-time wrestler in AEW. Um, yeah, sorry Fuego. I drew the rough end of the stick there, buddy. Miro, uh, I don't think you're beating him. I'm going to be honest with you. It'd be cool. It'd be really cool to see him beat up Miro, but I don't think it's happening. Um, then we had Danny, Daniel, Danny, 
Garcia go out there with 2.0. Um, and he was facing Darby Allen, who went out there with Sting. Um, Darby Allen won. I don't really know what else you expect me to say. Um, Darby Allen, Sting, the end of it, 2.0, was trying to trying to get a little cheap shots there on Darby. Sting, Darby fought him off. And I, I, I don't really know where we're going from here. Um, I'm, I'm still just waiting for the Darby turn or the Sting turn or one way or the other. I don't know if it's happening before all out. I, I, I could have sworn up and doubt it would have. Um, but I don't really see where they're going to go heading into all out because I'm going to be honest with you. You got to get Darby and Sting both on the card. But I don't really want to see them in a tag match. Um, yeah. I just really don't want to see them in a tag match, to be honest with you. Um, they're not going to be the ones facing the Young Bucks. They, I hope, don't face 2.0. Um, but they got to figure out a way to get these guys on the card. Those are two names that can't be left off the All Out card. Um, and I think the best way to do that is to get a storyline brewing where one of the two turning on each other. But is that going to happen with as little time as we have towards All Out? Probably not. Um, then we got the best friends, Wheeler Yuta, going up there with Chucky e. T. Tatum. And, of course, Special Squeeze, Orange Cassidy, going up against Hardy, the House of Hardy. Hardy going out there with the Private Party. Um, I saw a little match here. Um, and Wheeler Yuta is a guy, once again, I think is very entertaining. I've said it a few times um, while talking about the guy. He's a very entertaining guy, but... I don't know what this guy's ceiling is because he always seems to be the one eating pins, um, which makes sense. You're not going to have Chucky e. T get pinned by Matt Hardy. You're not going to have Orange Cassidy eat a pin. If anybody's going to take the pin, it's going to be Wheeler Yuta or one of Pride the Party. That simple. Um, and Matt Hardy ended up picking up the win, beat Wheeler Yuta in the middle of the ring, and that was that. Then we get announced for All Out, we get Andrade El Idolo. Andrade. Getting announced against Pac at All Out. Very good match, Brutling. Um, hopefully, hopefully we get to see some Shavel out there at ringside. I'm sure we will. I, I, I hope that he comes out with his own, re his own music, because here in the Savo would be amazing. I absolutely love Savo. Um, but he's going to be out there. Um, Andrade, Pac, should be a very good match at All Out. Um, hopefully, hopefully it's going to be a five-star match. I could definitely see it being one of them. Um, that's probably going to be a match that at the end of the night you're going to all be talking about when it comes to All Out. You're going to say that was one of the best matches, if not the best match on the card. And it doesn't have any championship implications or anything like that in it. It's just two damn good wrestlers. Then we have something that actually does kind of have championship implications because this is more than likely going to be the challenger for Britt Baker at All Out. And that is Nyla Rose going up against Chris Statlander. Um, before the match ever began, Nyla Rose did attack Chris Statlander, but that does not matter because at the end of the day, I don't really know what you want me to tell you outside of the fact that the white woman won because Chris Statlander overcame it all, and beat Nyla Rose, as she should, and Chris Statlander more than likely is going to be facing Brett Baker at All Out, unless something crazy happens on Rampage, because we will get into it in a moment when we talk about Brett Baker, but if something crazy happens, maybe, maybe it's not Statlander, but if, if all goes to plan and what I'm going to say in about a minute and a half, two minutes, it's got to be Statlander. And Britt Baker. Um, then we had the Bucks of Youth once again gracing us with their presence on the show. And they were back with the basketball hoop once again. Um, and we have one of the Bucks go up for a layup. Luchasaurus comes out of nowhere, rejects it, goes right in Jungle Boy's hand. Jungle Boy goes, he dunks. And then they had, um, they had, um, they had Luchasaurus say a line because one of the one of the brothers, one of, one of the young bucks said something 
that was a foul. That was a charge, or that was a blocking foul. He said, no, it was a charging foul. It is what it is. It is what it is. They, they were watching a little bit too much Team USA basketball. They were watching a little bit too much Damian Lillard. They were watching a little bit too much of JaVale McGee and Draymond and KD and Zach Levine. My boy. Chris Middleton out there. We had J. Rue Holiday. Yes, I know it's Rue, but I like calling him J. Rue. We had D. Book out there. Who else was out there? Jason Tatum was out there. I'm watching a little bit too much of them. A little bit too much. And then they got, then they then they decided, you know what? We want to also watch the women's team. And I call in one from the women's team, Kelsey Plum. That's the only one I know from the women's team. And I don't even think she was on the five on five team. I do know she was on the three on three team. Um, but I think Sue Burr was on it, wasn't she? Who knows? Who knows? Um, I barely watched the Olympics. Um, the only thing I really could tell you is Caleb Dressel won. Um, but they were watching a little bit too much basketball for the Olympics. A little bit too much. Um, were the, the Luchasaurus Jungle Boy combo of Jurassic Express and the Nick and Matt Jackson combo of the Bucks of Youth, Young Bucks. Speaking about being great, we have the greatest, one of the most inspirational, one of the most generational talents since Dwayne The Rock Johnson, the most electrifying woman in all of sports entertainment and all of professional wrestling and all of AEW and all of the United States and all of Pittsburgh. We had the homecoming of Dr. Britt Baker DMD was out there. She came out there repping her city, terrible towels everywhere, wearing the gold and black combo outfit representing the the city of Pittsburgh with the Penguins and the Steelers and all of them. And she was more rover in that city than Ben Roethlisberger has ever been. She is more over in that city than Sidney Crosby has ever been. Their baseball team is a joke. Cabrian Hayes could never touch the level that Britt Baker was on tonight. She was the biggest star to step foot in Pittsburgh on the evening of August 11th, 2021. She was the biggest name in the entire city. She came out, roaring crowd, crowd electrified by her presence. When you talk about electric, I mean the most electrifying response ever since Dwayne The Rock Johnson stepped foot in the WWE. It was amazing. And this was an interview with Dr. Br- Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, about Red Velvet. She says she she's not going to comment on Red Velvet's rise because she can't relate to having a rise because she's always been on the top. And she's the baddest bitch on the block. She said her feel- she can relate, however, to her fearlessness because when this company needed a new women's champion... When this company needed a face of the women's division, I was fearless in my approach to that to that that goal of being that for this company. She says since Red Velvet wants to swim with the sharks, she's gonna drag her ass right into the deep end at the main event of Rampage in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That means one thing and one thing only. That means that the most electrifying women in all of AEW is going to be gracing her presence and not only the first AEW women's main event on Dynamite, but she is also going to be the first AEW women's event main event in AEW Rampage. And that doesn't mean it's just two times because I'm sure she'll main event some more because Britt Baker is legit. And there's one more thing when it comes to Dr. Britt Baker. She's not only just main eventing a show of Rampage. She's main eventing the first show of AEW Rampage. That's huge. That is huge. And when the bell rings at the end of the night, I expect one woman to be holding that title above her head to an electrified crowd of everybody waving terrible towels going around there. The chance of DMD. DMD. And that is none other 
than the local dentist in AEW, the local doctor, Dr. Britt Baker the Yeti. Mark my words, if Britt Baker wins, it is going to be Statlander at All Out, but she has to get to All Out first. Um, I think she will, but Statlander and Britt Baker is more than likely the option that we're going to go. Then we had the Dark Order. We had um, Evil Uno and Stu Grayson come out there to face the Dave Soul in the distance. The, the obvious Super Brothers. I'm terrible at singing. Yesterday. This song is amazing, but I'm terrible at singing. I butchered it. I'm not even going to act like I didn't. Y'all can, can get mad at me all you want. I probably made you never want to listen to this song again. Guess what? Don't care. Don't care. Um, Dark Order. Good Brothers. They had a solid match here for the Impact Tag Team titles. Um, Stu Grayson wanted to attack um, the Good Bros before they even got into the ring. Didn't matter. Good Bros win, as they should, as they would. They're not losing the Impact Championships on AEW, especially to the Dark Order. Just not happening. Um, then we had a Camille promo about her going up against Layla Hirsch um, for the NWA Women's Championship. It's going to be okay. Um, then we had a segment with QT. Shout out to my boy Kevin Cabeza because I'm going to use this Marshit. QT Marshit. Not Marshall. Marshit. Because that's, that's really what he is. He is terrible, man. I do not give a shit about QT Marshit. I don't. Shout out to my boy Kevin Cabeza. Go follow him on Twitter. Um, but QT's apology. He says his words were twisted. He says, I did come out here for an apology, but Tony, you should apologize to me. For disrespecting me these last few weeks, but I'm gonna apologize to you for what I'm about to do. Your son, the Nick Colorado, grabbed Tony Schiavone's son from the crowd. They dragged him in. They started punching him, and he says, "Well, what's it gonna be, Tony?" Tony says, "I'm sorry for it. I'm sorry, you son of a bitch." And then QT says, "You know what? I don't accept it." And then that leads for them to take out or attempt to take out um, the son of Tony Schiavone. And Paul White, the big show, comes on down. Paul choke slams Aaron Salo, and Camarado and QT scramble from the ring. And we see Paul White stare down QT Marsh. And I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, there's no way they're about to do this match. That's another one that felt exactly a WWE segment did. Paul White does not need to be wrestling, especially against somebody that people don't care about, like QT Marsh. I would understand, maybe you're getting like a Will Hobbs over. Beating a big guy, beating a legendary big guy like that, but QT Marshall, who gives a shit? Then we got Wardlow and Jericho going up in the fourth labor match, the last labor prior to meeting Maxwell Jacob Friedman in that fifth and final labor for Chris Jericho. Um, it was a solid match. Um, MJF, he rakes the eyes um, and then tries to scoot him from behind. Aubrey Edwards ejects him. Um, and JR says, that little bastard. Beautiful line. Beautiful line. Um, then Jericho uses Floyd when Aubrey's out looking, hits the Judas effect, and beats Wardlow. And then we see the pinnacle. They come on in. They start attacking Jericho. MJF gets on the arm of Jericho. Then we see JK going on down, scares everybody away. MJF, um, and then Sammy Guevara was really late to the party. Um, but MJF says, wow, 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 wow. You got to the fifth labor, Jericho. But you don't know the stipulation yet, buddy. Because next week, I'm going to take something away from you, Jericho. Something that you love. Something that you use every single time. And that is, you cannot use the Judas effect. There will be no Judas. You will not be coming out to the music. You will be coming out to dead silence. If you think that's happening, MJF, you got another one coming. Because I guarantee you that that crowd is going to be singing Judas in, Judas in my mind. I'm a come, I'm a come, I'm a come in. I'm gonna come, I'm a come, I'm a come in. Judas in, Judas in my mind. Guarantee you it's happening. Garen fucking Tia, Maxwell. Guarantee it. Um, and then he says, but the one thing you'll learn, Jericho, is when it comes to me, you just met your successor. Do I agree with that statement? Absolutely. MJF is the future of AEW. He is. There's no debate about that. 
Um, if you're trying to debate that fact, I don't know where you are getting your your sources. I don't know where you're getting that knowledge and who you think is the next miracle for for AEW because I ain't got nobody like MJF on our roster. MJF's the top guy. You're that guy, pal. You're that guy. Everybody else, you're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. Anyways, I gotta get on out of here. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all know where to follow me on Twitter, GamersBeamYT, Instagram, DBeamGamerYT. Once again, if you have not already, go check out the podcast that I'm doing with Cameron Johnson and Escobar Morales each and every Tuesday and Thursday. And we will also be adding Stevie for it tomorrow, and he's going to be on it for the future as well. But he wasn't on it um, yesterday because of some complications with scheduling, but he will be on it this upcoming show for y'all. And we're looking forward to it, man. We are looking forward to giving you the best damn show that we can give you each and every single, twice a week. We, each and every single time we sit down and film, we are looking to give you all the best and most brilliant minds of wrestling coming together and making y'all proud of what we do there on Spotify and there on all the, 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 the podcast platforms that you can get the c and to break down on. Um, so definitely go check that out. Um, there will be a link. Um, in the description of this video that will be directing you towards there. And if you guys can't figure out that link, I did retweet Cameron Johnson's tweet about the link. So you can go check that out as well. And anyways, thank y'all for watching. Y'all know what to do. Hit that red subscribe button. Make it make it gray. Make it blue. However you however that works for you. Phone, it does it one way. Laptop, it's the other. Doesn't matter. Just change it from red, please. Change it from red. Leave a comment down below. Let me know why. Why in the world are we starting to do WWS things in AEW? And also, maybe leave me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If you want to leave me a thumbs down, so be it. So be it. You know what I gotta say to you? Thank you, because you're helping the algorithm. I don't really care if you give me a thumbs down. Give me a thumbs down. Oh, you're helping me at the end of the day. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you all. Um, Whenever I do, because I do work the next, I do. I will not be doing Rampage. I will talk about it this weekend on Sunday, but I will not be doing Rampage Friday night. I do work a double shift on Friday, so that is out of the question. Thursday, I work at night. Um, I think I work night on Saturday, and then I work during the day on Sunday. Come Sunday, I can guarantee there will be a video out. Saturday, I might get a video out. Friday, there ain't gonna be no video. There ain't gonna be no video. But tomorrow, I will be sitting down with Cameron Johnson and Escobar Morales to sit down and give y'all, once again, another great episode of the second episode of the Season Breakdown for y'all. Thank y'all for watching, and definitely go check out all my other endeavors.